Welcome to the program today. We're going to examine inclusion and exclusion. Now, I'm sure right away you think, what are you talking about? Well, we want to talk about who we include in our lives, who we let in, and who we exclude or shut out. And we want to do it based on who Jesus let into his life, and was there anybody that he shut out? And joining me all the way from England is author and pastor Paul Scanlon. Paul Scanlon is founder of Abundant Life Ministries and senior pastor of Abundant Life Church, one of the fastest growing churches in the UK. Paul is passionate about encouraging leaders to exchange religion for relevance and build churches that reach the lost. Each week, Abundant Life Church services are broadcast into 220 countries. Well, Pastor Paul, welcome all the way from England. Thank you. Good to be here. We, uh, we're talking a lot about the subject of love right now and actually trying to start uh, what I'm calling the love revolution mm. because uh, I think we need some pretty radical change in the church as Christians if right. we're going to reach a world that we say that we care about. Sure. And, you know, because we've been taught that we're to be in the world but not of the world, and because we've been taught that we need to be guard our heart with all diligence, be careful what we let in, and, mm. and even be careful who we let in mm. to our lives, which I do believe that who you associate with is, sure. is very important. The mm. Bible says, for example, not to associate with an angry man. And, mm. and so there's different things that we do need to consider. Mm. But I think because of this, we have excluded a lot of people out of our lives, mm. being more concerned about the danger that they're probably going to be to us than yes. deciding whether or not maybe it's somebody that Jesus would include yes. and that perhaps we're looking at it wrong. And I know that you teach on this and it's become very important to you. So mm. why don't you share with us what's on your heart about this? The, the thing that's caught my attention about the, the issue of inclusion was some years ago we were having a party at our home and the country lane near our home um, we have to use a little parking area off the country lane because we can't park so many vehicles in our home. So we had a guy out there on the country lane, which is very narrow. It was pitch black at night in the winter. And our guy was out there, about 100 people coming to our home. And he had a, one of these traffic batons waving cars into this parking area. And at the end of the night, when he parked everyone, he came into the house. And I said to him, did it all go well with the parking? Everything OK? He said, well, it's fine, but he said, except one lady, he said, that was, the car was coming up the lane. I just saw the headlights. Because so many cars were coming to my house, he assumed that this car was coming to my house. So we waved this lady in. So when she got into the parking area, she put down a window, and she was panicked, and she was afraid. And she said to him, why have you waved me in here? Who are you? And then he realized she wasn't coming to the party, <laughs> so he let her go, because she was obviously distressed that he'd flagged her down on this dark country lane. And of course, he explained his mistake, and she went. So when he told me that, and later that night when I was laying awake thinking about the night and that moment, I kind of felt God used that to help me understand something about his nature. It was almost like God said to me, I want you to, I want you to live with an assumption that everybody's coming to the party, which is what that guy did. He assumed she's <laughs> coming to the party. And I thought that's much more true to the nature of God than what the church has been like. Historically, the church has wanted to know who are the invited guests, what's their registration numbers, and we make sure we only get the right ones that pull in. Right. God's not like that. God's not so much interested in, 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 in who, who may, or may, not, may or may not want to come to the party, but everybody gets an invitation. And so when he waved her in, he, he didn't care whether she was coming or not. He took a chance and waved the car in. And when God reached my life, I was the last person you would think would come to the party. But God included me anyway and gave me a chance. And I think the, the parable of the, the, the sower and, and stories like that in Scripture are, are not because he's wasting seed on unproductive soil because none of the seed actually produced except one type. <laughs> but I think it points out that God gives everybody a chance. Every kind of soil condition gets a chance. Yeah, no one can ever say... I didn't get a chance. Now, I think historically in the church, we have not wanted to waste our seed on people we don't think will respond. So we judge and we separate and we exclude, and then we put our seed in someone that we think is a likely responder, which means most of the world are never reached by the church because we prejudge them as being unresponsive types. 
And so we finish up having church just filled with our types, which usually means most <laughs> of the community aren't being reached. Right. So we are inclusive of those we feel safe with, which I think is a human nature thing. Right. Yeah. But, but we by default exclude the majority that are not like us. And our church was 25 years old about 10 years ago, and we were just filled with one main type of person, which was predominantly white middle-class people. And white middle-class people need Jesus like anybody else, but they're not the only people in town. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, who are some of the people that you find that Jesus included that might be kind of surprising? <laughs> well, uh, who weren't surprising? Because everybody he included were clearly the ones that were not being included by the established church at the time. Right. He seemed to specialize in people that but were not accepted in mainstream. Let's back up and say that again. They were being excluded by the religious people of the day. By the status quo. The and I think that's so amazing that it's that if we get this religious mindset, yeah. we will literally exclude that's those right. that Jesus would include. Which which when you look at it on ratio of averages, it, it tends to be most of the planet, particularly the poor, <laughs> because um, Jesus from day one, it seems that he reached out to, I mean, the prostitute. Um, she's coming and washing his feet at a public <laughs> social event that's attended by high profile religious people. And they were disgusted at her, but more so than him and said, if this guy was the real deal and a prophet, he'd know. She's a woman of bad <laughs> reputation around here. She's an immoral woman. She was an especially wicked sinner of the Bible. And he <laughs> would have said, you know what, this is not appropriate. I don't want to be seen to be letting you touch me. So his often, often an, active, an active inclusion is what you don't say. And he didn't say anything. He didn't judge her. He didn't express an opinion. And what he actually did was at the end of the day, he, he protected her from that exclusion. He said, well, I know you are excluding her. I'm letting her do what she's doing, which is an act of inclusion without words. And then he used it to teach them. Now, I've, I've no doubt he was never invited again to those kind of parties because he messed up the party. <laughs> but Jesus was willing to be excluded to include someone that That's would never be good. included.